Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a very exciting one for me because the film role I'm going to talk about may have become one of my favorite everyday film stocks. If you've watched my videos before, you already know that I really enjoy trying out new film stocks. And I can't say that I've come across a role that I haven't thoroughly enjoyed yet. But the Lomography Color Negative 400 is likely going to turn out to be my go-to for most situations. So, let me tell you why. The Lomography Color Negative is a color negative consumer grade film, which comes in 35mm as well as medium format. It also comes in three different speeds, namely 100, 400, and 800. So we're really spoiled for choice here. I went the 400 ISO route, just to get myself a little acquainted with this line first. And I decided to take it out during Paris Pride weekend. The weather was just beautiful, besides the inhumane temperatures, and I already knew that this film is known for its vibrant colors. So I thought, what better time to try this roll out? And I had been really curious to test it for some time, and so this was the perfect occasion. So Lomography's motto is don't think, just shoot. And to be honest, the color negative 400 really does provide everything you need for this to be possible. With its versatility and adaptability, I could really walk around and just take pictures and not worry as much about lighting and compensating with my in-camera settings, which is something I would have to do with lower speed films. I found this role to be just perfect for spontaneous street photography. So with the pride festivities going on and the beautiful weather, I loaded my Lomography Color Negative roll into my Minolta X700 and headed out to spend my weekend taking pictures. As always, I will be showing you my pictures throughout the video. Mind you, I try not to edit my photos too much for these videos. I want to give you an accurate representation of what you can expect from the film stocks that I test. But with this specific roll, I wouldn't have retouched the colors regardless. They were so punchy and beautiful that I don't think I could have made them any better through color correction. I also did have really great light conditions. Not a single cloud in the sky throughout the whole weekend, so that's when this roll was definitely at its peak performance. Now some background, and I know you already surely know everything about Lomography or the Lomographic Society, but it is an Austrian company which sells and creates film stocks, cameras, and different photography equipment. But it is also considered to be a movement of film photography lovers. Lomography also has a website which is a wonderful social media where you can share your photos and you can also find other users' photographs. You can find those by country, year, but most importantly, film stocks and cameras used. For me personally, the Lomo website was just a gateway to film photography. That's where I would always go to look up film stocks and see what results other users have had with them. But I'm probably telling you something you already know. So back to the Lomography Color Negative 400. As I mentioned, the ISO of this specific roll that I used is 400. And I did shoot it at box speed. This ISO makes this film very versatile, just or dawn, rain or shine. Of course, the more light you can get, the more vibrant your colors are going to be. I found that with the very rare cloud, the colors leaned more towards pastel, but without losing any of their punch. In the 400 ISO category, this film is going to be slightly cheaper than your professional grade Portra 400, for example, which is great if you don't want to spend an arm and a leg on each one of your photos, but still want consistent, beautiful results, even in action-packed situations. The price is unfortunately steadily rising, as it is with most film stocks today. However, the Lomo Color Negative is available in a 3-pack, and that's where you really get your money's worth. With the pack of 3, your price is going to be pretty close to your standard Kodak Ultramax. Now the colors that I keep raving about are beautifully vibrant, rich, and super contrasted. They are saturated, yet natural, which in my eyes is a pretty tricky balance. And not only did I not touch the hues and the colors in post-processing, but I also left the saturation as it was. The one time that I did have to reduce the saturation a little bit was when it came to skin tones. In portraits, especially when shot in bright light, the skin tones did sometimes come out a little too warm, but it was an easy fix. So even though this role might not be your obvious choice for portraiture, it should really not discourage you from trying it out. Like here, for example. Towards dusk, this portrait of my friend came out perfect, but in the midday sun, I took this other picture of some gentleman and I did have to cool it down in post a little bit. Same with this photo here, where the skin tones came out too warm, 
and here I fixed them and all was good in the world. The exposure with this film stock is pretty wide. People have reported great results when pushing it a stop, and again for portraits on the other hand, you might want to overexpose it by half a stop or a full stop to get more natural skin tones. In this photo you can see that this film handles highlights and shadows really well and retains detail in both. The grain in this film was really good, at least by my standards. Again, it is a consumer grade film, so your grain is going to be present. But I found it to be pleasing and not at all distracting. It gives your photos a bit more of a vintage feel, which I personally really enjoy. If you want to go even sharper and have good light conditions, then you might want to reach for the 160 instead but of course at the expense of film speed, so make sure you have good light. And here's a little bonus to show you how well this film does with details and again, colors. Last week I did a little photo shoot for my local restaurant, so that was a pretty rare occurrence of me shooting still life. I went with the Lomo Color Negative 400 because I really wanted to do the dishes justice and I wanted the colors to pop as much as possible. So here are three photos that I took on that day. And I was really pleased with how the film handled it. I should add that the only light I had was natural light coming in from the window and other than that I was indoors and I was a little worried about that but no vibrancy was lost and the Lomo film didn't struggle at all. So I'm not sure if this has actually been confirmed anywhere but it is believed that the emulsion used in Lomography Color Negative is an updated formula of the Kodak Color VR which is a 1980s film. At least that is the guess made by many users. Regardless, I am just super happy that I found this film, which captures colors in its richest forms and offers great value for the money. I honestly wish I was shooting this film all winter when the light wasn't as good as it is now. So this time obviously I was looking for something a little less experimental and a little more accurate, an everyday stock if you will, but Lomography also offers a broad range of different experimental film stocks, such as the Lomachrome Metropolis that I really enjoyed and made a video about, you can go check it out if you'd like to, and they also sell their offset color films such as the Lomachrome Purple and Lomachrome Turquoise. I am physically unable to pronounce this word. But more importantly, Lomography have also released a brand new Lomochrome Color 92, which just dropped last week or the week before, which looks absolutely fabulous and I'm gonna try it as soon as I can. Now that's enough out of me today. I really appreciate each and every one of you who has watched this video. Let me know your thoughts on the Lomography Color Negative down in the comments below. And please subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and if you want to be notified about my next content. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and get out there, take some pictures. I'll see you all really soon. Bye-bye.